Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 269, the Pandemic All-Hazard Preparedness Advancing Innovation Act of 2019, or PAPA. I'm proud to have introduced this important bill with my very good friend, Representative Anna Eshoo, who is one of the original authors of the 2006 PAPA bill and the lead author of the last reauthorization in 2013. I also want to thank Energy and Commerce Committee Chair uh, Representative Pallone and Ranking Men Member Representative Walden, as well as uh, Representative Doc Burgess um, for uh, his work on the Health Subcommittee and the committee staff for working to get this bill uh, back on the House floor so quickly as we begin the 116th Congress. PAPA is a bipartisan public health national security effort which works to ensure our nation is better prepared to respond, whether it's to natural disasters like hurricanes, emerging infectious diseases like Zika or Ebola, or chemical, biological, radiological, or nuclear attacks, whether they might come from a terrorist group or from a nation state. The reality is that these threats we face are not just hypothetical. The ongoing Ebola outbreak is now, as you've already heard, the second largest outbreak in history. Since August of 2018, 374 people in the Democratic Republic of Congo have died from Ebola, bringing the total to 623 cases. Nine new confirmed cases have been confirmed in just the last week alone. Thanks to PAPA and 21st Century Cures Act, we are more prepared for biological threats and attacks. Last year, the FDA approved the first drug to treat smallpox and also an auto-injector, which provides a one-time dose of an antidote to block effects of a nerve agent. But PAPA is much more than what we think of in a biodefense bill. It helps ensure a coordinated health care response, whether it's to hurricanes and other natural disasters, by prioritizing our nation's most vulnerable populations, children, senior citizens, and people with disabilities. PAPA provides liability protection for physicians who volunteer after medical disasters. It ensures more healthcare professionals, nurses, doctors, and others can be hired and trained when facing a public health crisis. It ensures we have a robust supply of vaccines, equipment like gloves, hazmat suits, masks in our strategic national stockpiles so our medical professionals and our first responders have what they need. The bill ensures our preparedness and response capabilities will include a robust pipeline of medical countermeasures by increasing funding for BioShield Special Reserve Fund and BARDA, whose work over the last decade has resulted in FDA approvals for more than 42 different medical countermeasures. While the investments BARDA is making into innovative research and treatments are critical, we have to address the threats that have been around for years. As Dr. Burgess talked about, the 1918 <coughs> influenza outbreak killed 675,000 Americans and millions worldwide. Many experts predict that we are due for another global pandemic influenza, and the bill today authorizes $250 million to address the threats like pan flu. This bill is the result of months of committee work in both the House and the Senate. I can't emphasize enough how critically important it is that we reauthorize PAPA. I encourage the Senate to quickly pass H.R. 269. I would urge all members to support this critical piece of public health national security legislation and I yield back the balance of my time.